part of the Afrocentric movement. Can you sort of uh, give us, in a, in, a, in a nutshell, what is Afrocentricity, and what inspired you to shape and advocate such a philosophy? Well, well, Afrocentricity is a, a paradigm that uh, says that African people must view themselves and be viewed as subjects uh, of our own history and our own narrative, uh, and that we are essentially uh, mature and better off uh, if we see ourselves as agents of history rather than as marginals to the European history or the Arab history uh, or anybody else's history. We are uh, centered within our own narrative and we must use that centeredness as the point of our own investigations and inquiry. Uh, what gave me the inspiration to do it is because when I began to examine uh, the situation of black people everywhere, uh, not just uh, in North America, but in the Caribbean, uh, in uh, South America, and even on the continent of Africa, uh, even in Europe, or wherever you see black people, you see that uh, for the most part, uh, we are operating not on our own terms, but on somebody else's terms. Why is it so difficult for us to um begin to design and create the systems that we want to uh, shape to represent us, to allow us that centeredness that you talked about. Um, why is it so difficult for us to accomplish some of those things? Well, the reason it's difficult is because uh, we have limited knowledge of our own history and our own culture. And uh, this is, of course, by design. I mean, uh, we have been uh, colonized. Uh, we have been enslaved. Uh, and by uh, the enslavement and the uh, colonization of black people, we have basically been put outside of our own history. So it's difficult for us to have the knowledge to do what we need to do. So there are some of us, of course, uh, there have always been some of us who, who knew or who felt that there was something wrong, that we were not on our own path, that we were actually following the path of other people. And so uh, those people uh, have always been in the uh, minority, uh, and, but they've, they've, they've existed. I mean, we, we, we know that there have been Pan-Africanists before. We know that there have been people who have a sense of African agency before. But these people who have African agency and these people who are uh, profoundly committed and dedicated to the rise of African consciousness are often the people who are not in control of our institutions, our state governments, uh, and so forth. So once the state is controlled by people who are conscious, uh, and then we have a, a cadre of, of conscious uh, people who are acting out of the interest of black people, then we will see a change. And, and we're working toward that change. It, it hasn't come yet. Well, I, I guess the, the most major one in our history is Marcus Garvey. Uh, Garvey, in many ways, is a mentor to me, and I see him as a, one of the people who most desired to see the rise of African people. And I think, in a way, Maulana Karenga's work on Kawaida was a precursor, because um, in the 1960s in the United States, where a lot of people were talking about civil rights, and some other people were talking about political rights, he was talking about political rights, civil rights, and what he would consider human rights. His whole idea was that if you looked at uh, the achievements of African people on the basis of our culture, what you see is that most of the time we have a broken culture. Our culture is in effect uh, distorted, and it's distorted by living in the Western world. And how do you do that? You repair it. Mm -hmm. You have to repair it. This is why Kwanzaa was part of a, uh, of a, of a, a restoration. It was part of a, you know, let's, let's re if, if mature people have holidays, mm -hmm. then why don't we have a holiday to celebrate ourselves, you see? So that is the key to uh, Kwanzaa. But it's not just Kwanzaa that he created. He al I always tell people that you just see people whose name uh, uh, Nia or Imani, right. all these names came out of the Karenga's movement. Right. This was his his gift to us. Well, well, the, the, the notion of, of agency is um, uh, really uh, important because that means that we are actors. We just act. I mean, uh, 
to, to have a sense of agency means that you self-consciously do things in your own interest. That, that's agency, that you don't sit back and wait for other people to do things as if we are uh, somehow uh, beggars. And then uh, African fidelity simply means that we, are, we, we have a loyalty uh, to the interests of Africa. Uh, I, you, you cannot uh, get me to do anything that is disloyal to, uh, to, to, to Africa. And in that sense, the, the big question that I got from Haki Matabuti many years ago that black people need to ask is, um, I'm going to make this decision, but if I make this decision, is it in the best interest of African people? And that, that is, uh, that, that's one of the, the keys. And then the notion of centeredness means that we can't put ourselves in the margins ever. That we never, in any situation, people ask, what's the concept of beauty? We put ourselves right in the center of that question. Uh, beauty is what we know when we look at ourselves, when we look at our people. That's the beginning of things. And then we began to talk about beauty elsewhere. But, but that is fundamental. You have to be centered in your own narrative. If you're not centered in your own narrative, you will never, never be mature. So that is what we say. And we will never have a renaissance. We will always be considered beggars for the ideas of other people. And then in terms of psychological, I think it was psychological location. That's right. Yeah, that, integrity. yeah that, that psychological integrity that comes from our location, that is, where we, if we're located in the center of our own narrative, then the psychological integrity is that I am, my mind is straight. I'm not disoriented. I'm not uh, dislocated. Uh, I'm not, um, I have no uh, sense of misorientation. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm actually on the path that I should be on. So this notion of psychological integrity means that I am in sync with my reality, with my history, with my culture, and so forth. Well, we, we have to reward them. You see, uh, people respond to rewards. So when people do good, you reward them. When, we, when they look good, we reward them. When we see uh, 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 sisters, uh, for example, uh, wearing their hair in a certain beautiful style, we reward that, you see? Uh, when we uh, give uh, contests for our children, we give contests for our children and we ask them to do things that are in the interest of African identity and culture, and we reward them. Uh, we, we give our children African names. We reflect ourselves. We show and demonstrate that we love ourselves and that loving ourselves is a part of loving humanity. We are the first humanity we know. We know ourselves first. Mm -hmm. And then you, you can't skip over yourself and say you love everybody else before you love yourself. So when we do that, we, we, in, we nurture this idea of Afrocentricity and an African sense of self. We, we will see inexpressible joy. Number one, you would look at us and you say, wow, they're joyous people. That would be the first thing. Secondly, you will see incredible confidence, not just in the adults, but in the children themselves, because they know from whence they have come. They, they have no, there's no confusion in their mind. They are very clear. Uh, and thirdly, what you will see is an assertion on the part of African people that will allow us to compete with anyone in, in, in education, in economics, in, um, in science. Uh, you would see an incredible desire for technology. Um, this would be because we have a, we are centered in our own selves and we are able to respect other people because uh, we respect ourselves. If we don't respect ourselves, we can't respect other people. And so this is key to us. My name is Juliana Richardson and I'm the founder and president of the History Makers and you're watching ALI Television.